Hi everyone, Evie here, the Greek Goddess of Great Reading. And since I'm the Greek Goddess of Great Reading, today I'll be reviewing Abandoned by Meg Cabot, which is a modern retelling of the Hades and Persephone myth. Pierce knows what it's like to die because she's done it before. Though she tried returning to the life she knew before the accident, Pierce can't help but feel at once a part of this world and apart from it. Yet, she's never alone, because someone is always watching her. Now she's moved to a new town, but even here he finds her. Pierce knows he's no guardian angel, and his dark world isn't exactly heaven. Yet, she can't stay away, especially since he always appears when she least expects it, but exactly when she needs him most. If she lets herself fall any further, Pierce may just find herself back in the one place she most fears, the underworld. Now this book was almost kind of annoying to read because there were some things about it that I, it was more so with the characters, how they were talking to each other and things they said to each other that annoyed me, not the actual characters and the plot that happens, but it's still, I still wanted to read it. I still, I don't know, just like, do you have that ever with books, kind of love-hate relationships? It's really weird never experienced one as strongly as I did with this one. I really like the Hades and Persephone retelling. Obviously in this version Pierce is Persephone and John Hayden is Hades. He should have just made his name Hayden. That would have been so much cooler in terms of like Hades, Hayden. It sounds really similar but Hayden is a more modern name. But anyway, that's who they are and Pierce gets brought down to the underworld with John when he kind of takes her there when she dies. This isn't a spoiler by the way, we all know she dies. Persephone gets brought to the underworld, if you know that myth, this is pretty similar to that. The book is told from sort of a present tense, but Pierce keeps going into flashback mode and saying what happened when she died, after she died, and all these sort of events leading up to her moving to this new town with her mother. And the flashbacks could be really annoying at times because you wanted to know what had happened but they weren't coming yet in the story. But it also at the same time was a really good tactic used by Meg Cabot because it just made me keep on wanting to read to find out what actually happened. Now if you're familiar with the Hades Persephone myth, Hades pretty much kidnaps Persephone to come live with him and marry him in the underworld. And that's almost what John does with Pierce. Pierce meets him when she's younger and then when she dies she sees him in the underworld and he takes her away from the boats that are taking people away to their just desserts when they die. Either they were good people in life or they were bad people. But he takes her away from that and brings her to his chambers and she sees a big bed there and she was 15 when this happened to her so she was rightly a little freaked out and thinking oh my gosh this guy is going to sexually assault me or something like that which is a very fair statement. I would be terrified. So she tries to escape and she manages to escape obviously because she comes back from the dead. And at one point in the book we find out that someone else knows about John's existence besides Pierce and Pierce is talking to this person about John and this person is telling Pierce to be nicer to John because John and her were kind of having a fight because John was still mad at her for what happened when she escaped the underworld the first time. And Pierce almost feels kind of bad about it and I don't know why. I'm thinking to myself, girl, he kidnapped you. You should run far away from him and never talk to him again and don't give a shit if he's mad at you. But this person is telling Pierce to be nicer to John and I'm just thinking to myself, why? He kidnapped her. She doesn't have to be nice to him at all. So what the heck are you talking about, person? So that's something that kind of annoyed me. It was more so what that person was saying, not the actual character that Meg Cabot wrote. So just want to make that clear. Now on the back of the book there's some sort of like blurbs from other authors and book publishers and stuff and it's talking about John, how he's this really awesome lover and stuff like that. Not that anything over PG-13 happens in this book, but just like the term lover. But to me, I didn't really like John because he, he kidnapped her and he's always mean to her and he's kind of like hot and cold with her and I don't really like that type of relationship. Some people find it really sexy but to me it's too chaotic and too unpredictable and I guess people like that in YA and he is the a ruler of 
a underworld and maybe he's a bit angsty but I just I don't really like John as the love interest and I'm kind of annoyed with Pierce a little bit because she seems like she's starting to like him but she's not sure and I'm just thinking to myself hmm Stockholm Syndrome falling in love with your captor you know like Beauty and the Beast same sort of deal it was cute apparently in Beauty and the Beast but then when you think about it when you're older you say to yourself huh that doesn't seem right this person kidnapped you and entrapped you and now you're falling in love with them it's a little messed up so no I don't really ship them maybe in the next book because this is a series and I am going to continue reading it because I do like it despite my grievances with it maybe I'll end up liking John later on who knows but right now he's kind of annoying me and I don't really appreciate his big tantrums and stuff with Pierce because she had every right to do what she did to him and he should just calm down. A character trait I really liked about Pierce was that she cares about everyone and everything. She cares about the little birds and the little geckos and everything. She's almost like Snow White and that's what gets her into trouble a lot of the times which is maybe also a flaw but I think it's a great strength and sometimes great strengths can also be great flaws and Maybe that's hers for this heroine, but I really liked that Meg Cabot decided to make the heroine such a caring person because someone like John fell for her very quickly and it's obvious why because even though he is mean to her sometimes, she still cares about him and as much as I don't like that she's falling in love with him, I like that she cares about everyone she meets even if they aren't necessarily nice to her. So like I said, love, hate, right? But you gotta pick it up. I think a lot of people will enjoy it because it's, it just, you just, you don't know what to do with yourself. Go pick up Abandoned by Meg Cabot at a bookstore near you and start this series because I'm going crazy. I need to find the next book and figure out what's going on because John, I really hope you get better and get less angsty. <laughs> my Twitter and my website are linked in my bio below, as well as the SoundCloud page for the music that is featured in my videos by my friend Lenny Papadopoulos. Hit subscribe if you guys like what you see and want to see more videos by me. I'm Evie, the Greek goddess of great reading, and until next time, guys, keep reading.